Hey, welcome to my top 10 board game releases at Gen Con 2015. Hey, I'm Chris. Uh, I made a list of the top 10 games I'm most excited about checking out at Gen Con 2015. Uh, a couple caveats about the list. These are only games that are getting released at Gen Con 2015. So if they're already out, um, like Spyfall that came out recently, that's not going to be on my list, even though it's a great game. Or uh, games that haven't come out yet, like Codenames, it's going to be demoed, but it's not out yet. Uh, I didn't put that on my list. So I did my best. I, I believe that all of these, their official uh, release is happening at Gen Con. So with that in mind, uh, let's get right into it. Number 10 is The Village Crone. This is a one to six player worker placement game uh, being released by Fireside Games. Uh, in the game, players all play as witches and you can do different hexes on people, make them frogs, make them fall in love, that kind of good stuff. Um, it's got a really great theme that I'm quite fond of. It's got really great art. There's not a ton of info on how the game plays though, beyond just being a worker placement game. So that it might've been bumped higher if there was more info, but um, as it is, it seems pretty interesting. Number nine is New York 1901 getting released by Blue Orange Games. This is a two to four player tile placement game. Uh, it's about building the city of New York in 1901. Um, players are placing skyscrapers, their little tiles that are in sort of Tetris shapes. So there's a little bit of a puzzle thing going on there. Um, I really like that part of it. Um, it has artwork by Vincent Dutriat, which uh, he is my favorite artist working in board games today. It is absolutely gorgeous looking. Um, so it seems like a nice, fun, light tile placement game. Pretty excited about it. Number eight is Hostage Negotiator. This is a solo game by Van Ryder Games. Uh, it incorporates drafting, hand management, and dice rolling mechanics. Um, this is a really interesting theme about negotiating with a hostage taker where you're obviously the hostage negotiator. Um, and I love it for a solo game because that has to be, I can only imagine, a very kind of personal individual experience where it's sort of all on you to save people and talk people down and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's a really great uh, instance of theme and setting matching uh, kind of the thematic mechanics of the game. Um, very interested in this one. Number seven is Matai and I. This is a two to five player hand management set collection game by Carl Chittick. Um, it's being released by Asmati Games. This is a spiritual su successor to Glory to Rome, which has long been out of print and hard to find. A uh, very sought after Carl Chittick game. Uh, Matai and I seems to be simplified a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, it uses the cards with multiple uses for the card. So you can either use it for your set or use it for this thing, whatever. You understand what multiple uses means. Um, and I'm a big fan of that in games and Carl Chedek does that very well. Number six is Flick 'em Up. This is a two to 10 player dexterity flicking game uh, from Pretzel Games, which I think is a subsidiary of Z-Man Games, but I'm not positive, uh, officially Pretzel Games. Um, this is set in the West where you're kind of outlaws and you use flicking to shoot bullets at people or all this kind of stuff. It's a crazy overproduced game. It costs $75. It comes in an absolutely gorgeous wooden box. It's got tons of different components. Um, so it looks great on the table. Definitely the type of game that um, can bring people to a table when you're playing it because it looks crazy. Number five is Tides of Time. This is a two player drafting set collection game from Portal Games. Uh, it only has 18 cards in the whole game. Um, so it's, I guess, a micro game, kind of, sort of, maybe. Um, but it's a very interesting uh, drafting game where you're just passing cards back and forth and each time you're taking one. But all of the cards kind of stack on one another. So you've got to look at what your opponent's doing to make sure that you don't let them achieve their strategy by giving them the cards back. But then again, you've got to kind of be a little sly so they don't cut you off from your strategy. So it kind of distills a lot of the drafting uh, mechanic down into a really pure form just with two people because you can get two or three turns ahead that way. Um, looks really good and it's very inexpensive. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Number four, you've heard me talk about this one a bunch. Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born. This is a two to four player uh, expandable card game coming out from Plaid Hat Games. Uh, it has really awesome art and it's done some interesting tweaks on the collectible card game kind of standard fare. It adds dice into the mix, um, things like that. Um, I've been kind of wanting to get back into an LCG uh, lately, and I haven't quite found the right one, so I'm hoping that this is the right one for me. Number three is Champions of Midgard. This is a two to four player worker placement dice rolling game coming out from Gray Fox Games. Uh, this has players, you take on the role of Vikings protecting your land from trolls and other Norse beasts. Um, I am a huge fan of this theme. I love when Euros kind of step out of the kind of normal thematic fair to do something a little bit different. Has awesome art. 
I'm still really hesitant to see how the dice are used in the game, because if they're just used to resolve combat, I'm not a huge fan of that. But if they're used in interesting ways and there's lots of mitigation, I absolutely love that. So I've got my fingers crossed on that one. Number two is Mysterium. This is a game that came out in 2013 overseas and is just finally making its way over here. It's a two to seven player co-op game. It's being released from Asm Asmodee Games. Uh, this I've been waiting for forever. I've gotten to play it a couple times. It's brilliant. It's basically Clue meets Dixit where somebody takes on the role of a ghost trying to tell the other people in the group uh, who murdered them and where they were murdered and how they were murdered, all that stuff but they can only use cards. So then you see a location and you have to kind of intuit what they're trying to tell you by giving you these cards. Uh, it's really cool. Asmodee redid the art, so I'm going to wait and see what the art's like on this uh, American version, because the art on the other version is absolutely gorgeous and amazing. So that could be a deal breaker for me on a game that's so based on art, but then again, it could not be. So I'm definitely gonna check that out. And my number one most anticipated release at Gen Con 2015 is Discoveries. This is a two to four player dice placement game. Uh, it's coming out from Ludinate. They are the same studio and it's one of the three designers uh, and the same artist that did Lewis and Clark, which I think was a 2013 release and probably my favorite game of that year. Um, but it's a dice game and it has tons of luck mitigation. It has a lot of kind of the same feeling, it seems like, as Lewis and Clark, where there's a whole lot of like pre-planning for like one or two really big turns. Uh, that's really cool. It's got really passive interaction with the other players, which I really like. There's definitely strong interaction, but it's not, you know, a screw your neighbor type thing. It's not a take that interaction. Um, the art is by Vincent, du by Vincent Dutriat, uh, who I've already said once in this is my favorite artist working in board games. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm on a huge roll, no pun intended, on uh, dice Euro games lately, and I can't get enough of them. So I am hugely excited about this release. It's going to be the very first thing I pick up. And that is my list. I hope uh, some of that was uh, informative to you. I hope that helps you figure out what you're looking to get out of the uh, Gen Con. If you've got other games that you're interested in, tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. There are tons of games getting released, so of course I left a ton off the list. Um, there won't be news for the next two weeks uh, because of Gen Con and prepping for Gen Con, and then we'll be at Gen Con. But I will be back in August, uh, right after Gen Con finishes, back with the normal news. Um, so be sure to tune in for that. You can subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter as always. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a couple weeks.